long, long ago, over 2,000 years ago, when King Herod ruled Judea, which we know today is part of Israel, God sent an angel Gabriel to a young woman who lived in the northern town of Nazareth. The girl's name was Mary, and she was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. And the angel Gabriel said to Mary, Peace be with you. God has blessed you, and he is so pleased with you. Mary was very surprised by this and wondered, what did the angel mean by this? And the angel told her, don't be afraid. God has been very kind to you. You become pregnant by the Holy Spirit and give birth to a baby boy. And you're going to name him Jesus. He'll be God's own son and his kingdom will never end. Mary was so afraid, but she trusted God. Let it happen as God chooses, she replied to the angel. Well, Joseph was worried when he found out that Mary was expecting a baby before their marriage had taken place. He wondered if he should just put off the wedding altogether. Then an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The angel explained that Mary had been chosen by God to be the mother of his son. And he told Joseph that the baby would be named Jesus, which means Savior. Because he would save the people. Well, at this time, the land where Mary and Joseph lived was part of what was known as the Roman Empire. And the Roman Emperor Augustus wanted to have a list of all the people in the empire. And to make sure that all these people paid their taxes. So he ordered everyone to return to the town where their families originated from. And to enter their names into a register, or what we call a census. Well... <coughs> Mary and Joseph traveled a long way, over 70 miles from the town of Nazareth to the small little town of Bethlehem, because that's where Joseph's family came from. Joseph and Mary traveled very slowly, because Mary's baby was due to be born very, very soon. When they reached the little town of Bethlehem, they had problems finding somewhere to stay. So many people had come to register their names in the census that every house was full, every bed was taken. All the inns and hotels were jammed. Joseph begged and he pleaded, please, please. And all I heard was, we have no room. The only shelter they could find was a stable, a barn filled with animals. And in this poor place, Mary gave birth to Jesus, the Son of God. And Jesus' bed was a manger, a feeding trough for animals. Well, in the hills and the fields outside Bethlehem, shepherds looked after their sheep through the long, long night. And suddenly, the angel appeared before them. And the glory of God shone all around them. And the shepherds were very, very scared, but the angel said, Don't be afraid. We have good news for you. And everyone, today in Bethlehem, a Savior has been born for you. And you'll find that baby lying in a manger. Then many more angels appeared, and the whole sky lit up. And the shepherds heard them praising God, singing, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to everyone on earth. And when the angels had gone, the shepherds said one to another, Let's go to Bethlehem to see what has happened. And so the shepherds ran as fast as they could to Bethlehem. And they found Mary. And they found Joseph. And they found the baby Jesus lying in the manger, just as they were told. And when they saw him, they told everyone what the angel had said, and everyone who heard the story was amazed. And then the shepherds returned to their sheep, praising God for sending his son to be our Savior. This, this is the story of the first Christmas. This is a story of God sent His Son because how much He loves us. I just can't imagine, but you know, oh, what a glorious night that was. Let's
came to see the baby stood by his mother's side. Here lay the Savior inside a manger. Oh, what a glorious night! Oh, what a glorious night! I hear the angels singing.
I love that video. Because it shows us that Christmas is more than just a celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. It's a good thing to celebrate Christmas. The mere marking of times and seasons. When we agree just to stop working and enjoy the company of friends and family is really a wise and wholesome custom. It helps us to feel the supremacy, supremacy of the common life over the individual life. But there's a better thing than just the observance of Christmas Day, and that is keeping Christmas and understanding what its true meaning is. Are you willing to forget what you've done for other people and remember what other people have done for you? To ignore what the world owes you and think what you owe Jesus. To see that your fellow men are just as real as you are and try to look beyond their faces but into their hearts that are hungry for joy, that are hungry for love and acceptance and forgiveness. To own that probably the only good reason for your existence is not what you're going to get out of life, but what you're going to give to this life. To close your book of complaints against the management of the universe and look around you for a place where you can sow a few seeds of happiness in the Word of God. To slow down and be present for those who just need someone to talk to. To enjoy the journey. Rejoice in each day that the Lord has given us. And not rush to the destination. Are you willing to do those things just for a day? Can you understand? Christmas. Are you willing to stoop down and consider the needs and the desires of a little child? Or to remember the weakness and loneliness of people who are growing old? To stop asking how much your friends love you, but ask yourself whether you love them enough. To bear in mind the things that other people have to bear in their hearts. To try to understand what those who live in the same house what you really want without waiting for them to tell you. To make a grave for your ugly thoughts and make a garden for your kindly feelings with a gate that's open wide. Are you willing to do those things just for a day that you understand Christmas? Are you willing to believe that love is the strongest thing in the world? Stronger than hate, stronger than evil, stronger than death, and that the blessed life which began in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago is the image and brightness of God's eternal love. A love that we need to understand. An unconditional love like the one God showed us on that first Christmas day. A love that we need to show to others. A love that is patient. A love that is kind. A love that is not self-seeking or easily angered. A love that keeps no record of wrongs. A love that always protects. A love that always trusts. A love that always hopes. A love that always perseveres. The love that God showed us through His Son, which is a love that never fails. If we understand that kind of love, and we understand Christmas. And if you can keep it for a day, why can't we keep it always? But we can never keep it alone. So the question is, why? Why did Jesus come here? It is the birth of Jesus that provides us with the evidence of how much God truly loves us. <clears throat> That He gave His Son as a sacrifice so that we can have everlasting life. It's recorded in John 3, 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send Him into this world to condemn the world, but to save the world. 
through him. Jesus was born to die for us, to save us. This is the reason for the season. And that is why we need to understand its true meaning. I always love to tell this story. It's a story of a little boy who was given a part in a Christmas play. And he wanted a bigger part. But he got the part of the innkeeper. And he had one line. Go away, there is no room here. And he practiced that line. Anybody who knocked at his door, he'd tell him, go away, there is no room here for you. Every time somebody looked at him, go away, there is no room for you here. He practiced and he practiced until he got the anger in his voice. Just right. And on the night of that play, as Mary and Joseph knocked on his door, he set his line to perfection. He hit it. And as Mary and Joseph walked away, the boy began to cry. And tears came down his face and he called out, please, 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 come back. I'll make room because I know that your son is going to be Jesus, my Lord and Savior. And as we leave here tonight, as we celebrate Christmas, are we making room for Jesus Christ in our hearts? As I ask now as these boys come and light the candles, as I ask as the ladies get up, we have to remember that the story of Christmas is like no other story we ever heard. And little wonder a choir of angels broke out in spontaneous song, disturbing not only just a few shepherds, but the entire universe. Because God loves us so much, He gave us this amazing gift. As Paul wrote in the book of Colossians, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. He's before all things, and in Him all things hold together. Jesus was the most righteous person who ever lived on this earth. But he had not one trace of self-righteousness about him. He was approachable in a way that we as his followers have not imitated very often or enough. The most important to Jesus always seemed to be the person standing in front of him. For many of us, that person that is standing in front of us is just in the way. Jesus treated others with love. Jesus treated others with kindness. Jesus treated people with respect. Jesus defined the golden rule so that we are called to treat others the way Jesus treats us. And so this Christmas, we need to understand what is the true meaning of it. This Christmas, it's up to us now to give this gift. A gift of friendship. A gift of kindness. A gift of compassion. A gift of forgiveness. A gift of love. Because we have to give the best that we have. Because God on that first Christmas gave the very best that He had. Let's stand as we sing our closing song. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round your virgin mother and child, holy Oh, yeah.
Again, we just want to thank everybody for being here this evening. To feel the true meaning of Christmas. To be surrounded with family and friends. To feel the love that Jesus Christ has for us. To remember what is the true reason for the season is that Jesus died for us. As we leave here today, take that feeling with you and spread His joy. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear and precious Heavenly Father, we come to you thank you for who you are. We thank you so much for the gift that you give us, your Son. Help us as we celebrate that, that it's just not the birth, but we follow it through His death and resurrection. We just ask your Heavenly Father that you give us the courage to go out there and be a witness for you. We ask that we continue just to surround ourselves with your love, to share with family and friends, to have that heart of forgiveness. Give us your eyes, your Heavenly Father. Give us your ears that we can hear those things so we can see the needs that are out there. But tonight we just want to celebrate. We want to celebrate the birth. As we leave here tonight, watch and protect us. Be with all those who are traveling over these holidays. But again, we just want to thank you for who you are, our Lord and Savior. It's your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. For